three most common types of tweezer and I'll go through them, how they differ from each other and I'll show you some examples of how they work as well. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies in Melbourne and I'd like to talk today about tweezers. So I've got an array of tweezers right here. So I've picked the three most common types of tweezer and I'll go through them and I'll show you how they differ from each other and I'll show you some examples of how they work as well. So let's see, this is the first one. These ones here, as I turn them around, these are the straight pointed tweezers. Okay, and they're called straight pointed because it's quite obvious they're straight, not bent at all. And they come to a very fine point on the very tip. You can see that they're connected at the back here and they'll use the natural uh, spring qualities of the stainless steel to spring back and forth. Okay, like so. Now from there, we move on to the curve type. Okay, so the tip themselves, they resemble the, the straight ones, but they have this curve here, which makes them useful for different sorts of applications. Now, again, as you can see here, they're connected at the back here, using the natural spring action of the stainless steel. Now these can be used, I guess, this way with the points face downwards. And you can also spin them around and you can have them facing this way as well. So depending on whether or not you need this end to be visible or not, these can be handy. So quite often, you have all three of these tweezers on hand so that you have your choices. When you have a particular job, you'll be able to choose whichever one, whichever tip suits that job the best. Now the third one we'll talk about are the flat tweezers. Okay, so if we turn them around here, you see how they have a spoon type wide bill on the end, it's been sharpened. So the pickup point is much broader. Same construction as the rest, connected at the back, and then you have the spring action of the stainless steel there. Okay, this will probably be the most common ones you've seen, straight ones. Obviously you use this for picking up small uh, items. Building plastic model kits, you'll pick up all the fine details. I guess uh, I've been building one of the uh, uh, APCs, uh, which was recently released and had one millimeter diameter nuts. And these small tweezers are very handy for um, coping with that. Whoops, we've just gone out of focus here. Here we go, we're back. And then you have the curved ones, they're a little bit shorter. So obviously when you're using them, you see the shape is a little bit different. So your thumb action is at this point and you're very close to the component. With these ones, the tips are actually further away. So if you need to go into confined areas, then this is where you'll be using these ones. The other thing too is you'll notice that these are a different length. Okay, so the material is the same, but having the different length means that you've got different leverage points as you squeeze the tweezers. So this being longer, when you squeeze these, these actually have a softer feel to them. So you have a little bit more control with very tiny pieces. This one, being shorter, is a bit firmer. And then this one, has a similar feel to this one here because they're roughly the same sort of size. Okay, let's go into some examples now. So we have our three different types of tweezers here. I guess the most obvious thing would be for small parts, right? So if I've got these bits of plastic, let's just move these so there's more of a room for you to see. All right, so I've got these little bits of plastic but I'll just chop these, just random bits. And these generally are not the easiest things to pick up. Um, with your fingers, over here we've got some bits of paper. Okay, so these can rep replicate photo wet or anything that's thin, even um, decals. Now I'm trying to pick these up with my fingers and it's very difficult, so let's do that. All right, and then odd balls like this. A little springs, this little purple spring, little metal pin. And then in the radio control world, we use these really thin shims, which I can barely pick up at the moment. All right, so that. So this shim is uh, 0.1 mil, really tiny, and then also a little tiny E-clip. All right, so 
with the uh, straight tweezers, I guess you can you can hold them at whichever point is most comfortable. So you see this, this is with uh, furthest back. Okay, and when you squeeze this point, you've got the most reach. But then obviously you can move it all the way in, and you can get very close movement too. And obviously when you when you're holding it like this, it feels quite soft to spring action. So you can adjust that feel like that as well. Gets to a point where it starts feeling like chopsticks. Okay, so like so. And then it's just a matter of picking these these parts up. So these are an odd shape. This is actually cut from a uh, a rod of styrene. And you can see just like so. You can just pick up these parts. Okay, so this is going to be very handy when you're attaching it onto plastic, uh, other components because trying to pick that up with your fingers, I mean, you can just see how small this thing is compared to my finger. And the, the easiest way was to actually just press it on there, but you don't have a lot of control because you can't really see what you're doing. Okay, so this is where you're pretty much picking it from the bottom and the top like that. Okay, so you can see that's a thin sliver of plastic. Now as we go, we've got these odd bits. So it's just a matter of finding the best point of holding it. Now, if there's a point where you, you actually need to have a little bit more control, the tips here, obviously, they're very, very sharp. Okay, so you can, you can pick them up, items like this. Occasionally, if you have very convex items which are rounded, picking up by points isn't the most secure because parts can fly out. And I'm sure a lot of you have already had the experience of parts flying off any in the carpet and you never find it again. If you need a little bit more security, you can connect it further up. You see there. Okay, so this is a wider point and it's gonna be more secure on this flat piece. Okay, so if we flick it like this, you notice know, so it took a bit of um, effort to get it to, to flick out. But if we hold it from the tip, you notice that it's actually moving quite easily. If you're not careful, that can easily just flick out of the way. Okay, and so same thing, sort of thing. When you pick up other items, it's very handy. Okay, that's just picking up some springs. There's a small little metal collet. That's pretty round. And that's where you have to be careful because you don't want to squeeze these too hard. If you squeeze it too hard, it's going to go flying just like that. Okay, so that's where you just have to take care when you're picking up these parts. But it makes a huge difference because otherwise with your fingers, you wouldn't be able to control that to put it into the place it needs to go. So there's really thin shims here. Now they're really thin shim. I can barely move it. I can't really pick it up because it's so thin. But with tweezers, straight away. See that? It basically disappears, it's so thin. That's the easiest way to pick up items. Uh, at the racetrack, I guess uh, you're normally using shims for adjusting your suspension. So having a pair of tweezers is going to be very handy for doing things like this. Okay, and then when you go into your photo wedge parts. Okay, like so. So obviously you can pick them up like that and then you can readjust it on the tweezer itself to the position you like it. Okay, so if you wanted it to match up with something like this, just get it onto the particular angle you like, and then you can match it up and apply your glue. And of course, as you get smaller and smaller, these fine tweezers, you can see are really useful. And the length is handy too, because if you need to glue parts into uh, a sub-assembly which you've already built, say a lot of aircraft, you'll build cockpits to a particular point, uh, and then paint it and then add bits later. So you may have ejection seats that you need to add later. This will definitely help you reach into the cockpit and position parts correctly. All right, so that's how you use the straight tweezers, which is a pretty common method of using tweezers. Now, how does the curved ones differ? Okay, so basically, I quite like curved ones because of the angle that they sit. It feels a bit more natural with with your hand, so you're actually coming from this point like this. And as you pick up items, you pick them up from the side. And it'd be like so. Okay, same sort of thing with thin items. Okay, so you see those. That's the shim. And then you've got 
the little middle collet and then springs. Okay, so th this is not really any different from using the straight ones. The main difference is the feel of it because the angle you're approaching the, the item. So rather than coming straight like this, you're coming at an angle like this. The other advantage too is when you're applying things, so just say I've picked this item up here and I want to glue it onto a surface. Actually, let's pick something that's white. It'll be easier for you to see. Okay, so if I want to glue that onto a surface, then, whoops, I just dropped it. We just hold it at the particular angle. And your hand still feels fairly natural like this. So if we're using a straight one, then a straight one. Basically, I have it at a slight angle, as you can see. And then you hold it in place, and then you apply your glue. Okay, so they're the main differences between the curved and the straight. The other thing too is you can have it on the other way. And that also helps with either picking things up off the surface like this. And also the same sort of thing where you want to rest it against the surface. And then glue it in place. The other useful thing too is with the tongs on this end here, you can also use them to apply pressure onto parts as they're gluing. So that's how you use the curved ones. All right, now the flat ones here, the main difference is you have a much wider blade across the front here. And when you pick up items, this is very often used for decals, it has a much better grip across a, a flat surface. So as you can see here, well, there's less chances of it actually spinning in place and actually apply this to pretty much where you need it. So perfect for flat surfaced objects where you need to make sure that it doesn't actually move around too much on the tip. If you use something like this, because it's only pinpoint holding, it actually rotates quite easily as you can see. Okay, so that's your, your basic usage of these three different shapes. Now the, the other really handy thing for these particular ones is for manipulating masking tape. So let me just quickly put some masking tape over here and we'll, we'll cut it up. All right, so we've got our masking tape. And just so we need some really, really fine strips. Okay, so we've got it on our cutting board, got a ruler, we'll slice the strips. Okay, now without tweezers, you wouldn't be able to peel these up at all. So let's just get the first one. Okay, so. So you can see that. This particular strip is about a one millimeter. Okay, so if we do this, and then when you apply that onto your model, you just put this where you need it here. You can manipulate it to the point you need. So just say we want to, okay, let's do it this way. It's probably gonna be easier for you to see. Apply it along this line. So just using the edge, I can just roll down that end. And then the other end, which is still up, you can hold it and tension it to make sure it's straight. And then we can follow that line like that. Okay, and so you can see just how how easy that is to control. Imagine trying to do that with fingers. You wouldn't be able to do that at all. Okay, so I've got an even finer part here. All right, that one there. This one's about half a mil. So you can actually get this down to hair width and still have control by using these particular tweezers. And it'll be very useful for any of your model building because as you can see, you'll be using tape quite often. So whichever ones you prefer, you can use curved ones, the straight ones, all these flat ones. 
but obviously flat ones for this particular application gonna be they're a bit chunky I think but you can still use them if that's what you have all right so that is my tutorial on how to use tweezers tweezers are very common tool I think everyone thinks they know how to use them but there are a lot of different shapes around so these are the three most common shapes you have your pointed straights you have your curved pointed and then we have our wide tweezers here okay so this one probably most common you find them anywhere this is for picking up small parts uh, any parts really uh, the curved ones different angle of attack also they can use in a reversed action as well like so and then you have your flat ones which we quite often use for decals because it gives you a lot of control on the decal paper but it's also useful for controlling flat objects because there's a, a wider surface area here all right so thank you for watching my tutorial on tweezers and i hope you uh gained a few extra techniques and it's a bit clearer on how to use tweezers so thanks for watching and if you have any questions please leave some comments on the bottom of this um screen and i'll get back to you as soon as i can